Here, at Trader DNA, we make things easy to understand for everyone. Hey guys welcome back to another episode, in this video we will be going through our support and resistance trading strategy in depth, and how we use it in combination with price action. If you want more videos more often please smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell, so that you know exactly when new content is released. A very important point before we start. Everything we discuss in this video can be used for currency trading, stock trading, and crypto, because price action stays relatively consistent across different assets, so we're going to go very in-depth in this video. The best trades usually happen around support and resistance, no matter how you see the chart, it will be obvious. Most traders love to use support and resistance as a trading strategy, but they often lack a clear method for taking advantage of price action support and resistance. In this video, I will show you how to build a systematic trading approach using support and resistance. So, what exactly is support and resistance? Support and resistance levels or support and resistance zones as they're often called in price action books, are basically areas in the market where the price has a high probability of reversing and moving in the opposite direction. They are drawn on the chart using horizontal rectangles and are found by looking for the times when multiple reversals occurred from similar points to one another. These areas serve as valuable markers that are fundamental in identifying entry, exit, stop loss, profit taking levels, and risk to reward ratios. Support level definition and examples. Think of support as the floor. The area where the price has difficulty falling below. This is where buyers are expected to step into a falling trend, causing the downward trend to pause as demand increases. In theory, support is the price level at which demand or buying power is strong enough to prevent the price from declining further. The rationale is that, as the price gets closer and closer to support and becomes cheaper in the process, buyers see a better deal and are more likely to buy. Sellers become less likely to sell, since they are getting a worse deal. In that scenario, demand or buyers will overcome supply or sellers, and that will prohibit price from falling below support. Here are other examples of support level. Resistance level definition and examples. Think of resistance as the ceiling. The area where the price has difficulty rising above. This is the area where sellers come into a rising trend, causing the upward trend to pause as supply increases. In theory, resistance is the price level at which supply or selling power is strong enough to prevent the price from rising further. The rationale behind this is that as the price gets closer and closer to resistance and becomes more expensive in the process, sellers are more likely to sell and buyers become less likely to buy. In that scenario, supplier sellers will overcome demand or buyers and that will prohibit price from going above resistance. Here are other examples of resistance level. And now, how to determine support and resistance levels. 
although the steps sound easy enough, many traders struggle to find support and resistance zones in practice. If you are having difficulty, don't be discouraged. Identifying levels of support and resistance is a skill that is built up over time through lots of practice and analysis. There are thousands of ways to identify support and resistance levels on a chart. Some traders will use indicators, but we honestly prefer to draw them ourselves. By observing price action you can learn to decipher what the market is showing you. Our method is simple yet effective and can be adapted to fit into any trading strategy. Step 1. Start with a clean chart. Support and resistance are all about price action. Nothing else. Remove distractions and simply focus on the price. Indicators have a tendency to cloud a trader's judgment. This is especially true where a trader has multiple indicators on one chart. A trader can easily convince themselves they are seeing things that are not necessarily there. When it comes to drawing lines of support and resistance, keep it simple and start with a clean chart. Step 2. Identify all swing highs and lows. The first support and resistance indicators are swing highs and swing lows. Swing highs and swing lows are turning points in the market. These are areas that the market has already indicated there is more buying or selling pressure, causing the market to turn. So if the market were to revisit these areas again, there is always a chance that it could turn at those areas again. So, I want you to put a line at every top and low you see on your chart. The important thing here is to draw a simple line at all lows and highs. It shouldn't be very subjective. The powerful aspect of this step is that you will be able to easily determine whether the market is in a trend or not, since you will see the highs and lows. As you can see on this chart, the market isn't currently in a trend. Step 3. Add areas to connect the highs or lows. The last step in drawing support and resistance zones consists of linking the highs and lows you identified with horizontal rectangles. Those will become your main support and resistance zones. There is almost no way that the zones you draw will lie exactly on all the highs and lows you identified. That is totally normal, be okay with it. Whenever you feel you can connect two highs or lows, add an horizontal rectangle. Once you have completed this process, you can be confident that the rectangles represent clear support and resistance zones. Step 4. Simplify. Remove any areas that are not close to the current price they will only confuse you. If the price does dramatically jump, you can always redraw your areas of support and resistance. But in the meantime, keep your focus on levels that are just a few pips away from current price, and pay even greater attention to levels that have shown strength or levels that have been tested three or more times. And now, how to trade support and resistance. One of the best uses of support and resistance is for defining entry and exit points for positions, coupled with efficient risk management settings. Now that you know all the basics, it's time to apply these basic but extremely useful technical tools in your trading. Because here, at Trader DNA, we want to make things easy to understand, we have divided how to trade support and resistance levels into two simple ideas. The bounce and the break. First, the bounce. As the name suggests, one method of trading support and resistance levels is right after the bounce. Many novice traders make the error of setting their orders directly on support and resistance levels and then just waiting for their trade to materialize. Sure, this may work at times, but this kind of trading method assumes that a support or resistance level will hold without price actually getting there yet. You might be thinking, why don't I just set an entry order right on the line? That way, I am assured the best possible price. For example, instead of simply buying right off the bat, we want to wait for it to bounce first before entering. If you've been looking to go long, you want to wait for it to bounce off support before entering. And if you've been looking to go short, you want to wait for it to bounce off resistance before entering. By doing this, you avoid those moments where price moves fast and break through support and resistance levels. From experience, catching a falling knife when trading the market can get really bloody. Second, the break. 
In a perfect world, support and resistance levels would hold forever. In a perfect trading world, we could just jump in and out whenever price hits those major support and resistance levels and earn loads of money. The fact of the matter is that these levels break and often. So, it's not enough to just play bounces. You should also know what to do whenever support and resistance levels give way. There are two ways to play breaks in trading. The aggressive way and the conservative way. The aggressive way. Or support and resistance breakout strategy. The simplest way to play breakouts is to buy or sell whenever price passes convincingly through a support or resistance zone. The keyword here is convincing because we only want to enter when price passes through a significant support or resistance level with ease. The support and resistance breakout strategy involves the following steps. Step 1. Identifying the price movement direction. If there is an uptrend, we should expect a resistance breakout. If there is a downtrend, we should expect a support breakout. Step 2. As soon as the price makes a real break through the target level, we open a trade. In case of a resistance breakout, we buy an asset, in case of a support breakout, we sell it. Let's take a look at the examples where this strategy can be applied. The conservative way or support and resistance retest strategy instead of entering right on the break wait for the price to make a pullback to the broken support or resistance level and enter after the price bounces here are the examples illustrating the strategy
placing stop loss properly when using support and resistance trading strategies. Once again, take into account that support and resistance levels should be referred to as price zones, which sometimes appear to be quite blurry. The price actively interacts with these areas, so stop loss should be placed outside of these zones. As always, at TraderDNA we want to make things easy to understand, if you learned something new, make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell, and leave us a like to show your support. See you next time. Thank you.